In this video, we'll go over the operation of the HTP Revolution 2500 for basic MIG welding. In particular, we're looking at short circuit MIG welding on mild steel. We'll begin by looking at the manual MIG welding mode right here. Now with it set to MIG manual, you can simply adjust voltage and wire feed speed using the two knobs and it's displayed both in the readouts and on the LCD display. Some recommended voltage and wire feed speed settings for manual mode are given inside the machine door. Let's head back over to the panel and look at some of the other settings. The inch button will feed wire and the purge button will purge gas out through the lines by opening the valve. By pressing this button, you can access an additional menu where you can adjust preflow, run-in speed, which can be set to automatic, or you can override that, as well as your burn back, which adjusts how much wire is remaining after you weld. Again, we can leave this on automatic, and post-flow time. Pressing this button will access the inductance setting. You can use the inductance setting to fine-tune the arc. A higher setting generally gives a softer arc, and a lower setting will give an arc that is more crisp. The final page in the menu will allow you to override the automatic pinch-off pulse, which controls how it electrically clips the wire at the end of welding. The standard polarity for MIG manual mode is DC electrode positive for solid wires or gas shielded flux core. However, if you need to run a self-shielded flux core with a DC electrode negative polarity, in the settings menu, you can go to this setting, press change, and it will electronically change the polarity for you. By setting the machine to MIG 2T, I can use synergic settings where I don't need to know the voltage and wire feed speed, I can just set the type and size of material. Press this button to be able to access the specific processes. In this case, we'll select synergic MIG and set it up to weld on carbon steel. You can select the type of shielding gas you're using, either an argon CO2 blend or straight CO2, and the diameter of welding wire that you're using. With those parameters set, all I need to do is turn the knob on the left to control the wire feed speed, and a reference thickness is shown in the center of the screen for material thickness. The wire feed speed is shown on the left of the LCD display, and the left readout shows an estimated amperage for welding. Notice how the voltage in the upper right readout changes as I change the wire feed speed according to the synergic curves. I can override this by increasing or decreasing and the trim or the amount that it's changed over the curve is shown in the LCD display right here. This allows me to fine tune the arc for my specific application and my preferences. Similar to the MIG manual mode, I'm able to press this button and access additional settings. Now I can cycle through, and in this case, I have a slope down timer that allows me to do a crater fill in addition to the other parameters that we looked at before. Once again, there's also an inductance setting and a setting for the pinch off pulse that we looked at earlier. In addition to carbon steel programs, there are programs for stainless steel, aluminum, and then in the special category, that includes flux core programs for a gas shielded flux core, as well as a self shielded flux core. And on the self-shielded flux core, the polarity is automatically set to DC electronegative. That's how to operate the HDP Revolution 2500 for basic MIG welding. In the following video, we'll go over some of the more advanced features that this machine offers for MIG welding.